Welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're looking at Ragnar. But before we do that, roll those credits and a word from our sponsors. PCBWay are proud sponsors of the channel. They offer industry-leading 3D printing services covering all types of materials and processes. They also offer industry-leading online CNC machine services from milling, machining, and turning in all the materials you could possibly need. They also offer a fully online prototyping PCB service. Everything from assembly through to design, you can do it all online with an easy system to use for quality. So for all of your needs, check out PCB Way in the link in the video description. Right, welcome back now. Ragnar. So, Ragnar was, let's just say that, Printing this came in several different. Let me start with the base. So the base we actually did in FDM. James did this on the bamboo. Took literally twelve hours, I think. Not even that. Seven hours maybe. And he had it in sport mode. Everything else on this is resin. Now comes in a lot of parts. So the two boots, they're two prints. You've got the legs, they're one part. I hollowed them. You've then got the torso. I hollowed that as well when I printed it. You've then got the two arms, the two forearms, and then the two hands. Sword is separate, shield is separate, head is separate. Then you've got the cloak and the wolf skin. They are both separate. Now, apart from the legs and the torso, everything was printed solid. Which means good and bad, really. This is a commission. So when I do a commission, I like to mostly, if I can, print solid because it's weighty, it's strong. You know, there's never gonna chance it's gonna crack and split or for some reason, randomly, which I've had before, I have resin leakage out somewhere in the model. You know, doing it solid negates all them problems. But it creates one more. And that is the weight this model if you take off his cloak it's really okay it's not that bad but this cloak is heavy I mean really heavy because of the way this cloak was if I'd have hollowed it there really wouldn't have been that much space saving uh, like that much resin saving in it but not only that I wasn't happy with anywhere I could put a drainage hole so, in the end, I just printed it solid. Now, all of this was printed on the Magforms P13. Um, and it absolutely smashed this. Like, everything was perfect. The P13 is not the quickest printer in the world. It's not, compared to when I use something like the Apex or the Ultra Print. They're very fast printers. But what the Magforms does is print perfect every time I've only ever had one foul on the magforms and that was because I forgot to um, support the build plate and there was about 12 models on there and I forgot to support any of them I didn't realise until the print had finished but about 6 or 7 of the prints actually came out with no supports and they were printed fine like I used them I had to redo the others and clean out the van. But the Magforms P13 is an astonishing printer. And you'd have seen on our Honey Badger group, I put some pictures up a few days ago of some of the parts that the Magforms done, like full build heights. It's an amazing printer. It's astonishing, to be honest. It's my favourite printer by far. It outperforms everything. Not on speed, but on quality, it outperforms every other printer I've got. Anyway, back to this. So, we get to paint. Now, this is a commission, 
So I find if I do a commission, I tend to go a bit further on the paint job. If it's just for me, I'll do something. I think, oh, yeah, that's okay. That's all right. I'll, I'm, I'm happy with that. But if it's for a commission, you think, I better just do this. I better just do that because you know it's got to be perfect because someone's paying you for this. Um, I contacted him and said, obviously, there's, there's early and late Ragnar. Early Ragnar, really nice paint job. Late Ragnar, he's got tattoos on his head. I thought, yeah. I presume you want early Ragnar. And his immediate reply was, no, really, I wanted late Ragnar with the tattoos on his head. So, thanks for that one. Cheers. So, paint your tattoos on his head. I actually really enjoyed painting this as well. Really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm sort of looking forward to it because he... He's saying he, he wants Floki and Lagafer as well. Um, Floki, I'm quite I'm quite looking forward to doing. It's uh, it's actually a really good model to paint. So with the base, I first sprayed it with Stone Effects paint. You see, James uses it a lot on stuff. I used the Stone Effect paint on the base. What I did then was PVA around the bottom of the base, and I sprinkled in some grass not covering the whole base just sprinkled it randomly i then covered it in snow so it looks like just little bits of grass are peeking through snow i then use snow on say some of the top of the mat the rocks so it's a bit snow capped and then down the bottom i just put some um dirt basically just to break it up and then a few odd little bits of tufts of grass and stuff like that stuck on to it painting um, this was mostly done in Green Stuff World Paints. Um, reason being is I've got two sets of Green Stuff World Paints. One's leather and the other one I've got a set of brown paints. Just I think it's like six or eight paints, different, different shades. And it's mostly what I did this entire thing with. Most of the colours are not the colours that come out of the bottles. Because a lot of this is brown... You need to change up the tones of the brand to differentiate the different materials. So I tended to mix my own brown, adding a bits of black and stuff like that to it to get my own tone. I'd do that in a little empty dropper bottle and then just feed the airbrush with that. I also went over some of this with um, uh, Citadel um, paints, which I airbrushed. Um, contrast paints just to get a different finish on top of some of them I dry brushed bits um, just so that when you looked at it you could differentiate the different types of materials because they were all different colours but on the same sort of tone um, the skin tone on this is one of the most pleasing skin tones I've done I'm really happy with the skin tone on this it's the head that's come out I think almost as perfect as I can get it. Um, the rest of the face, I'm happy with the skin tone, came out really well. The wolf skin, I really like. There's one part of the wolf skin, which is underneath it, which is like the hide. I'm amazed how well uh, the, cut, like the hide came out underneath. It looks like a real hide underneath. Unfortunately, you're never going to see it because it's glued together, so you can't even take the cape off. You know, I know it's there and I know it looks really good. <laughs> so the shield and the sword again. When I do something like this, what I tend to do is on my computer, I bring up multiple images of Ragnar. I choose what colour palette I'm sort of going to go for. So I found a picture of him and I was like, that's a that's the colour palette I want. That's the sort of... So what I do then is I bring up multiple pictures of him on the screen for whatever parts I'm painting. And I permanently refer to it and because I want to get this as screen accurate as I can. Because this is, this is a commission for Ragnar. The guy obviously loves Vikings. So I want this to match what it looked like. So this, I chose a screen image and that's what I went with for the colours and everything on this. What we'll do now is we'll give you a quick close up so you can see what it looks like.
So yeah, I actually really like this. Um, pretty soon I'm going to end up doing a model for myself because I think the last sort of four or five models I've done have literally all been commissions. I haven't done a model for I don't know how long that's actually me keeping it. Um, so there is a Wolverine I am going to do. I found I really like. I've never done a Wolverine, so he's coming up next, and it's going to be for me. I'm keeping it. But back to this. Um, it would, because this is a commission, this is going off this week. It would be nice that once I've done them, to maybe have them all next to each other. He will no doubt send me a picture once he confirms the other two and he wants them. It would be cool to see them all standing next to each other. So hopefully you'll be able to send me a picture once we uh, crack on with the other two. But it's been a while since I've done a figure of this size. It's about 400 mil. This is a Sanix model. I think this was blown up to 125%. I believe it's Sanix. Um, yeah, it's been quite a long time since I've done a mod like a character model this size. A lot of the stuff I've done going back a while, a year now, has all been really big stuff. So it was nice to sort of knock out the printing in this in a few days um, and then just crack on with painting. So let me know what you think. Send us send us a picture, comment if you've actually done this already, this model, or if you've done Floki or Lagopher. Um Let us know what you think. I really like it. It's one... One of my favourite things I've done for probably the last year, to be honest. Better than some of the big stuff I've done. Um, because they tend to drag on for a long time. You end up getting hate for them. Whereas this was over and done in a week and a bit. And I like it. I look at it. I like it. So don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.